Okay, so I'm just going to do a quick summary here of uh, sampling distributions just to sort of tie up <clears throat> the chapter which we completed today. As I mentioned in our last class that uh, sampling distributions are created when we take several samples of a given size and then we observe the sample statistic. We can observe a sample mean and so if we create the distribution of all of the possible means that we get from a sample, then we are essentially creating a sampling distribution of the sample mean. And that's uh, sort of given to us here in this definition. A sampling distribution is a distribution of all the possible values of a statistic for a given sample size. All right. And uh, the question we want to ask is usually, what is the nature of that sampling distribution? Um, is it a normal distribution? Is it the Poisson distribution? So what is the nature of the distribution of that sample statistic? And we have two theorems that helps us out. One is the first limit theorem, which your book calls Theorem 6.1, which is that if the population is normal, the sampling distribution is also normal. And you could see here that the mean of that sampling distribution, which is mu x bar, is the same as the mean of the population. The standard deviation of the sampling distribution is the standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of the sample size. Okay? If you notice that if the sample size happens to be 1, then the two things, you're back to the population. But as the sample size gets very large, the standard deviation gets smaller and smaller. All right? So that's with the um, first limit theorem. For us to use the normal distribution that comes out of that um, uh, application of the theorem, we basically use the Z formula as we see here in the diagram, which is that Z is equal to the sample error or sampling error divided by the standard error. And that's typically a, a way of thinking about the Z value. It's basically the difference between the mean and a statistic, the parameter in the statistic, expressed in standard deviations. So this is um, quite similar to what we've done before, which is the, popu the normal population. Except that instead of x bar, we would have had x. Instead of mu x bar, we would have mu. And instead of sigma over n, we would simply have sigma. So they're quite similar. Um, I just want to mention here that what if our population was not normal? Then how can we handle that situation? Well, it so happens that the central limit theorem is our savior here, that if indeed we took large enough samples, there is this phenomenon that happens, which is that the sampling distribution becomes uh, roughly normal, or approximately normal. And the larger the sample size is, the more normal it actually gets. And in that case, it turns out that that distribution has the same mean as, um, as the population and the standard error, sigma x bar is sigma over root n. So kind of like the same results that we got from the first limit theorem, except the beauty of this theorem is that you do not have to make the assumption that the population is normal. And so we could apply it to any situation as long as we make sure that we have ample, uh, sample size that is adequate. All right? So that's cool. I want to... Um, look at uh, our last thing that we talked about today, which is proportions. Uh, so the sampling distribution of a sample proportion. Now, in your textbook, it uses P as the parameter for population proportion, but I've decided for this class that I will use pi and P. So pi would be the population proportion, P would be the sample proportion. So I would have to make some changes to some of the notes that I give you to be consistent with that. All right. So usually a population has a characteristic, and there's a certain percentage of proportion of that population that have that characteristic. For example, what's the proportion of women in the population? Or what's the proportion of people who have a, a university education? So that's a, that's a characteristic or an attribute. What's the proportion of people who drive? Uh, and so that data for proportions is usually created by counting. All right? So how many people got A's in a class? How many people have failed or have to repeat? Uh, those sorts of statistics, um, um, parameters, sorry, allow us to express them as proportions. So the definition of, of a proportion then would simply be the number of favorable observations of that attribute 
divided by the total uh, pop size of the population. And that's for the population value. But if we're talking about a sample, it would be the number of um, observable values of that attribute, or the number of observable cases of that attribute, sorry, and the sample divided by the sample size, as we see here, x divided by n. So I just want you to know that this comes from the binomial distribution. Because you think about binomial, that you have these two possible outcomes, yes and no, black and white, green and yellow, good and bad. Well, in our case, the reason why we have this um, binary variable is because you either have the attribute or you don't. Either you drive or you don't. Either you're in commerce or you're not in commerce. Either you pass or you did not pass. So as a result, um, P, the sample, uh, the sample proportion, is really um, can be modeled using a binomial distribution. However, what we've noted is that if we have a sample size that is sufficiently large, and we have these two conditions satisfied, that is the sample size times p is greater than 5, and the sample size times 1 minus p is also greater than 5, then we can approximate the sampling distribution with a normal distribution, as you can see from this diagram. So it turns out that that normal approximation would have a mean equal to the population proportion, pi, here it says p, and has a standard deviation, since all normal distributions have a standard deviation, that is pi into 1 minus pi over n. So remember, folks, I'm using pi instead of p, but I don't have time to change all of my slides at this point. And then, of course, the z value, if we think of the generic form of a z value, is the sampling error divided by the standard error. In other words, the difference between the mean and the statistic divided by the standard deviation. So here's our sample statistic, which should basically be p, our population parameter, which should be pi, and the standard error. And if we express it in terms of the values that we saw here, that is, you know, where we have mu, we put pi, and where we have the standard error, we actually use this formula. Then we will see that um, we end up with a z formula that looks like this, all right? And uh, that allows us to now calculate probabilities. Probabilities like, if uh, a random sample of 50 students are taken, what's the probability that 20% or more are in the faculty of business, right? Or in the faculty of commerce, in the Sobe school? So that's an example of a probability uh, question involving sampling distribution of the sample proportion, all right? Um, we have some examples there. If a true proportion of voters who support Proposition A is 0.4, what is the probability that a sample size of 200 yields a sample proportion between 0.4 and 0.45? So what that says is essentially, what's the probability in a random sample of 200 that will get between 40 and 45 percent of the individuals saying that they actually support Proposition A, whatever that is, all right? And so... Here's our uh, probability statement. And we simply need to calculate the corresponding z values. And uh, <clears throat> if you look here, that's where we would calculate the z values. So essentially, we want to be between 0. Z is between 0 and 1.44. And we can go to our table and calculate that. Between 0 and 1.44, which gives us a probability of 0.4251. So it's not uh, a difficult problem to solve, all right? So just to discuss, we talk about sampling distributions. The sampling distribution basically is generated from observing a sample statistic um, of, a, of a given sample size. We could talk about a sampling distribution of the sample mean or the sampling distribution of the sample proportion. And in both of those cases, we could say something about the nature of that sampling distribution. If the population is normal, then the sampling distribution, the sample mean is also normal. But if it's not, we could use the central limit theorem. And as long as we take sample size sufficiently large, the sampling distribution of the sample mean would be approximately normal. For the um, case of the... Um, for the case of the... Uh, proportions now, sample instrument sample proportion, we just need to make sure that our sample size is sufficiently large. 
but also the um, criteria or the conditions that n times p is greater than 5 or n times 1 minus p is greater than 5 are actually met. All right? And that should basically do it for what we want to, to do. Yeah.